Okay, so it's been a long time that I did not release a video. So here it is. We are just going to remove the camera um, from the hierarchy child in the player object. Currently we have it as a child inside the player. Let's just remove it. It's better to keep it outside and use some script or use our player controller to move the camera manually from the script instead of just making it follow by using it as a child so um, just keep the camera holder which is the object that will follow and the main camera outside so back here in the script underneath the look comment we are going to comment um, we are going to write comments and because this is for the camera we will write camera and save and hashtag region and then a hashtag end region after that, and close that reason. Private camera, and we'll call it player camera. So it's going to be private. And then we'll also need a private. Um, we'll need a serialized field rather. So we'll just add um, add a header and a header for camera then a serialized field in private transform for our camera holder now underneath the update we'll define a new region and say camera um, no player camera then we'll do hashtag end region inside right to create a new update a late update this is a late update in the awake we first get the camera to play a camera equals camera dot main so just equal to camera dot main Late update. We will write player camera dot position. Player camera dot transform dot position equals camera holder dot now position, and then player camera dot transform dot rotation uh, rotation equals camera holder dot rotation. Pretty simple. Just doing it late update and it's not anymore as a child of the player which makes it look better I prefer keeping the camera always out of any object to always be in the hierarchy so just add a space on top of every um, header it looks better inside the higher inspector sorry so just adding space and then another one for this one space space again and finally for the first one in space just save that now let's go down in this place we have this nice little late update and this minus so the region helped us play a camera now if we select our player we are looking for a camera holder we drag in the camera holder now if we hit play everything will work just like previously I can move, crouch, crouch up and down, climb up these stairs, crouching. Yeah. Moving about while crouching. Yeah, just jump up and down. So I can jump, move, run, just like previously and there's not much of the difference now jump over these nice objects now let's go back into our script and define a region and this will be called 
player shooting then we'll just do hashtag and region just open the player movement oh we just close it now we'll call call shoot Rather, let's call handle shoot. So now we will just handle shooting. Huh? Private void. This one is going to be called handle shooting. And this function will then be calling another function which will be called shoot. So right now we'll do a, an if. And we're not gonna spawn any objects anyway, so we're gonna use ray casting. For now, let's just get the input. Dot shoot. Dot. So input dot player dot shoot dot is pressed. And open the two curly brackets. Okay, so because we have not made any in the input, we just go inside and make one. We need to have a player input actions, and let's add one more and call the shoot. Inside the new binding, we will just hit listen and I will click. Um, it's not coming. Oh, not the right button. You want to have the left button of the mouse. So, mouse left button. But if I'm, I'm clicking my left button, it's not coming. I don't know why. Maybe it's just because I'm recording my screen, maybe. For what is not working, it's, not, it's giving the right button but not the left one. So press, what's press? No, it's not working. So left button seems to have been overridden by the I don't know whatever it is, but we can manually just set it to left button because it does work in the game. And a new binding soon for the gamepad, so we'll just back a little behind. And the gamepad down down we have right trigger which is basically R2 on the PlayStation that's all I don't know about Xbox or any other and I know it's R2 which is right trigger so dot shoot dot is pressed and now it's all back to normal no more errors because it found the shoot shoot input in the player so as I said we are gonna have to create um, a function which is going to shoot so we'll write if physics no 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 I just don't need, yeah let's just do that inside the shoot so private void and call it shoot this is where we'll write the if physics on raycast so we'll just call shoot for now and our shoot function we're gonna do if physics dot raycast and we'll have to shoot so which one okay we'll have to receive a position in a direction so vector 3 position comma vector 3 direction which way from where to direction and then we just put in the position comma direction and then another comma and it's asking for the float max distance we um, we want to have a raycast hit info so it says um, let's put in mathf dot infinity now it's saying layer mask oops so we did make a simple mistake here. Get out. Oh, hit. Raycast hit. Raycast hit. Oh, um, what's the error? Uh, it says that you can't use the out keyword. So if you look, oh, so basically the out had to come first. The max distance was the last object. 
just delete that from there and paste it in it here and then put in math of the infinity in there now we have the hit which is gonna contain all the data for what's like the position the rotations and colliders and all that stuff is gonna be stored in hit so we'll just give in the player camera to transform the position in the shoot method it's asking for a direction so um uh, the camera dot transform dot forward which is going to be the z axis so it will always shoot forward or any other direction next we will check we'll say no uh so this is where we're gonna write our code so let's get some effects now because in Raycast we won't see any bullets spawning so we don't have to instantiate any bullet yet we will just it's like a fault so let's open Safari on my browser and here I am on Unity Asset Store here there's a particle pack you need to install both of them so I just installed particle pack and you can also add to my assets legacy particle pack um, just to see which one works out now in our package manager oh it's still loading it's refreshing assets refreshing it refreshing, refreshing robotical okay so we have both of these here so just download one of these and import them the particle pack and the legacy particle pack Okay, so I'm back here in the script after importing and fixing all the materials. Let's now start with the shooting coding. So, comment shooting. I just cut that previous part, that's why you can see the importing and all that. I manually also did the edit, edit and rendering, convert URP materials and fix those materials because they are meant for built in. Okay, so let's continue in the coding, shooting and a region and a non region and now we've just defined a serialized field private game object this is gonna be for the concrete decal prefab okay and above it you can write a space just like I did and then a header and this will state it's going to say shooting oh shooting shooting so shooting see inside the weapon effect we have this wood impact okay so the flash metal effects yeah that's just a oh what's that ow sand impact smoke flash a one so you can see inside the normal particle pack doesn't have something that I need and that's why I already have told that we'll need to install legacy particles so import and I skip forward just like I did um, I'll skip forward just in yes there you are I have changed the materials fixed it already I just skipped it forward and now we can continue coding. So paste it, and this one is going to be called uh, metal. So the metal effect. Now we have two game objects. Let's make another one. So your light field private. This is a game object, and this one is going to be called flesh. Flesh decal decal prefab. Now we have three empty game objects, three um, references to fill. 
let's look inside the particle pack and it's like updated it what's this the two weapon effects folders uh, what's this so this is showcasing no name what's that let's just change the color and see what happens so okay it's just the material but we don't need to go and check that folder out we are gonna go in the first one the weapon effects which has a prefab folder and all these effects the dragon sand effect you can see a bit of sandy oh it's all falling down okay that's sandy we can explore these so let's see about there's this water container effect um water leak so that's what it is if you hit play it's a bit bad because it's the legacy one but it's looking good still delete it because we actually don't need it we're just having some fun so heavy hard now concrete decal prefab we need a metal decal prefab and a flesh decal prefab so we have them all available here so oh so we don't have concrete we have a stone effect it looks more like a wall effect so let's just go in the menu if you hit play and you look at one of these effects it looks it's metal that's metal effect stone so it looks like a wall so I think I'll just put this use this for the concrete so I change the name also and you have this container effect you have this flesh effect there's this spoken effect and all those effects so let's stop the game now back in the script script just rename this to stone decal prefab and back in the sample theme we can now start dragging them so first we'll drag in the bullet impact stone effect then the metal effect and then the flesh which uh, they both look the same Go back to the menu and hit play again. Let's look at it again to go fast, fast, fast. It does the flesh, right? Why the team green? Should it be red? And there's this container effect. them and just spawn those water effects and there's this extinguish effect which removes the fire then there's again a flesh so I think we will use one of these so big and small what makes difference the sample thing you can drag in the small effect so small save and now in the script we have these three they're all assigned double click on the region to open it and we currently have a physics of raycast raycast from the position and direction which is the play camera position and the play camera's forward axis So now we can call instantiate. Oh no. So we won't instantiate any bullet, but we have to instantiate the effect of the fire. So at least make it look real and clear to the player that he's firing. So if hit dot transform dot game object and we then the dots layer can be detected by a layer. Oh, so I don't know how to use that. 
and I won't use it still. And we can use tag. So tag is not working. That's a compare tag will work. So compare tag. We compare the tag with. Um, this is for metal. Oh yeah, metal. No, it's the first one. Stone. So we just keep it one, two, three. So the definition is stone first, then metal, then flesh. So else if and the same code again. Hit dot transform dot game object. Come to tag, and we will compare this time with metal. Then we will again check else if hit dot transform dot game object, and again compare tag with this time. This this one is for the flesh, so you can see we have the flesh decal as well. So we'll compare our tag with flesh. Then now we have all three of these. So let's call instantiate. This creates clones of an object. Like instantiate stone decal with app. and many types of instantiating so we're gonna go with option seven option six option five oh uh, yes so option five seems good let's go start with the stone decal prefab which is the object to spawn then the hit dot point point which is gonna be the position uh, what's we gonna wait for oh it's thinking that i'm gonna send in Parent. We can uh, dot. Uh, <laughs> what's the problem here? Um, I think we should continue. So maybe check that out later. Oh, there you are. Just stopped. Hit dot normal. Then we'll give it the parent, which is hit dot transform. Okay, so we um cannot just give it a vector three, it's not able to convert it, so we'll try this cotaneon.euler. This is just checking if it works. And now we can just copy all these lines. Oh line paste paste. And in the second one, instead of instantiating a stone decal, we can instantiate a metal decal prefab. And then below we can instantiate a flesh decal prefab. We don't need to handle the destroying of those effects because they already have a decal destroyer script given by Unity. So let's just add a cube in the scene for testing. And we will scale it up. So scale through and drag it up, drag it sideways. In the cube we can put three three one so one three three and y we can put one point five and two point six two point six four one point five and something like minus three and just add three of these save the project we have three cubes for testing let's name this one to stone because we'll tag this one as a stone. Then one more for metal and another one for what's this one? Flesh. We are gonna add a tag. And the first one gonna be for stone, as we wrote exactly the same as the strings in the script. So metal and this one is gonna be for the flesh. So flesh save then on stone we add stone tag on the metal we add a metal tag and on the flesh tag we can add a flesh so all three of these are tagged let's hit plan c the result so here we are and if i shoot something is oh well so you can already see that something is incorrectly okay it's not spawning them straight 
effect working correctly. So if you shoot on this one, shoot, shoot. Yeah, it's like making it that Euler is not getting correct angles. <laughs> That's funny. I'm shooting there, it's firing the effect there. So let's just find out why this is happening. Delete these three. It's not working. So quaternion.euler is not the way to go. Let's try hit dot normal. Hit dot transform. But that's gonna be in the point dot rotation. Well, there's nothing as that. So this won't work. Normal line. Nope. So basically, hit dot normal does not return a quaternion. It returns a vector three, which at the end doesn't work. So to make it work, you'll have to use a different method. Let's see, quaternion dot. There are many other methods too. So this one's deprecated. This is deprecated. Oh, you know, rotation, you know, angle. This is the one which has no deprecation, but this one, these two are deprecated. Even this one is deprecated. Only the Euler one has nothing as well. But I'm sure they will get the same effect. And that's all it wants was this angle. Angle axis, axis angle. Let's explore a bit. Form to rotation. Inverse. Let's just see how Unity did it because it's their effect they would have already used in the shooting example so if we just go into the shared folder scripts and gun shoot and then we see all these big big effects game object flash hit effects now here we have if input or get button down this is using the old old input system then you have wake up hit if physics and candle hit hit and here it somehow the checks the material name after it checks that it does a case wood case 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 and character it does flush it effects and randomize now here you can see you can just copy this quaternion loop rotation normal hit dot normal paste it in here paste it here paste it here that should fix the problem let's go back into the editor And now if we hit play, shoot, shoot, effects are all straight now. You might notice a bit of a funny effect that we are really going really fast. Every update is it really spawning the bullets. That's because there's no timer. And you can shoot whenever you want. As fast as we can. Just go crazy shooting, shooting. Of course, that's not how it works actually. We will have to change this a bit. Jump up and down. You can see what effect is happening because it's just spawning multiple. The same exact position. Unity then has rendering issues. And that's not really good. So we will define a private, well, the private, serialized field, private, so it will be a float, time, between, shot, so between each shot, how much time do we need? Put up, oh, I think it's better to be, put back down, yeah, it's down is better. Then we define a private float for our gunshot timer. And we'll just set this private float time between shot equals point point one or point two. It's just point two or point one doesn't matter. 
and I just hit the point one right now. Then underneath the method, point one F, yeah, that's point one F. Gunshot time. So gunshot timer. Every time you shoot, we should do gunshot timer equals our time between shot. Then we'll add an if gunshot timer is greater than not smaller than zero f. It's a smaller than zero f. Then we would um gunshot timer and it has to be yeah greater than zero so if it is greater than zero it's not in the negative we should continuously do gunshot timer minus equal to time dot delta time and then inside the if input we just add a new statement and gunshot timer is smaller than zero f This can have an equal to, I think, equal to adding. Well, first let's equal to here. So if it is smaller than or equal to zero, here if it is greater than or equal to zero, we can add it. So that's it. Construct timer minus equals time. And here we have that system working. So I think now we will have a nice little timer, which will not let us shoot a lot of words so we can actually make it really slow if you wanna but I'm gonna keep it pretty fast it's still 0.1 seconds if I shoot it is like a limit so it's not like that before and you can see there's also a really funny effect happening here the size is pretty big if you look at these effects Let's see, so this is really big. You add a cube, the cube becomes really big. And why is that why is it becoming really big when it spawns? Um I'm not sure. So when it spawns it's becoming really big inside this prefab mode I can see it's really small anyway let's see again um and what happened here oh we never removed the cube <laughs> it's spawning cubes now you and sizes are pretty big still just pause the game if I enable all change together gradually as you can see scale will change to point one's pretty good effect. So instead we are going to change it inside the prefab to select this one metal effect. Oh sorry, I just cut the part where I was having some experiments. Anyway, so in the weapon effects, metal effect select, stone effect select, and we also want to select the flesh small effect and enable all of them to change together and set in the point two, point two scale and all of those axes for these three effects that we are using So now we have added the effect of the shooting, but there is no gun effect. I mean, we've got the hit effect, but not the shooting effect. I mean, so let's go into the 
right hand into the gun holder. You've got the AK-47 model. Um, it's just a blank model with the mesh. It's not prefab yet, so you're gonna use one of those effects from um, the. You're gonna use an effect from Unity Technologies Multiple Pack Effect Examples inside the weapon effect. Uh, not this one. Inside the weapon effects prefabs, you have two of them: muzzle flash effect and muzzle flash one. Well, let's try out this one. So just drag it inside the AK-47. And reset its transform. You can see it doesn't look like what we want. Yeah. It does look a bit odd. So let's just delete this one. And get in the other one. Now this one seems better. So drag it into the AK-47. And just make it zero manually because otherwise we can't actually reset it. Resetting means changing the scale. So zero. Hit play. That one looks good. Yeah. So it looks like the effect we need. Let's just do prefab unpack completely. And then save our project again. Let's collapse this window. Let's align it to our gun's barrel, the place where the bullet just goes. In reality, we're just firing raycast. We did not fire a bullet. Let's put it here. Right about there. Let's add. No, just open up this window. Um, stop opening. Oh, uh, what's wrong? I have okay. Play. You can hit the simulation button. Why is this window? Because oh, expand. So expand. You can hit play to see our effect. It will work good with a fine machine gun. See you outside the effect is pointing upwards right now we will just um, turn it around a bit now it's firing in the correct direction just drag it back to its spots and it looks good now save the project again on the muzzle flash effect we have a particle system which handles all this Gunshot timer, we have to find it. So, we will need a reference to the particle system. See your lights field, private. It's gonna be a particle. 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 Oh. Particle system. There it is. Private particle system. And this is a fire, fire effect, fire effect, right? No particle system. So fire particle system. And semicolon. Now, when we are firing, the shoot method should handle it. I think it should happen when, whenever the shoot method is called, and we have done the raycast if. We just put in the fire particle system dot play. And so every time we have the effect will play. Every time we shoot now, it's gonna play the effect. And now we just need to give it the reference. We don't have a reference yet to the fire particle system. Let's give it the muzzle flash effect. And if we 
gently. Yep, there you are. If you shoot, you have this effect. It's looking pretty small. So, the gun holder. And the AK-47. You can see the saw. Oh, and when you switch to local, the axis is aiming upwards. Which is incorrect. Let's switch it to scale. Oh no, oops, come on, see? Switch it to scale all together and then put six. Okay, six looks really good, but no, no, perfect. Because now you put two front in the head. Oh man, it's just going shooting, shooting about without any business. Just firing about. Now inside the muzzle flash, we just put it back to scale together and six. Then on the muzzle flash effect, we will hit plan C. Okay, six, make it ten, I think. Ten. Ah, oh, that's the one. Ten is the correct position. Now let's just reposition this properly. So fix the rotation problem first. And I hit play. If we just look at it from the side, let's just okay, let's align it in the center of the barrel. It's shooting upwards. You can now rotate it, keep it in local so that it does local rotate, local rotation, not global. And that's why we had a problem early on. Now if I hit play. Yep, there you are, the effect. Okay, so that's pretty much of this video. I can now shoot greatly. There is no audio. We're going to add audio in the next video. And we might also add some other stuff. The audio is going to be in the next video because this video is already gone pretty long. So that's it really for this video. Just to make the hierarchy back to a clean hierarchy. The environment, get metal, flesh. That's it.